let's now let's now move to Korea. Uh, we've uh, centered on the transatlantic economy, Africa, Russia, now uh, Korea. The uh, colleagues before have stated that there is the rise of that the rise of China for them constitutes uh, a gift in some sense. Uh, uh, I think Monsieur Mouzoir even said this has given back Morocco economic sovereignty. Now, uh, from a Korean uh, perspective, so you have uh, you are so close uh, to this uh, giant uh, Chinese economy. What are what is your take on it? Uh, is uh, is this uh, are you regaining economic sovereignty? Uh, are you benefiting from this, uh, as the others have said, or do you think the the uh, geopolitical tensions that uh, come with the rise of China, Korea sitting in between the United States and and this uh, this uh, big red dragon uh, is is uh, more of a threat than of an opportunity. I'd like to to hear your opinion on this. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, let me begin by providing you a, a very uh, brief and a quick uh, overview of Korea's macroeconomic pictures, uh, especially in the global the uh, context. Uh, certainly Korea is no exception to uh, the synchronized global economic slowdown. Uh, with Korea's uh, export uh, slowing and the uh, decreasing investment, uh, the business investment, uh, Korea's economy is uh, substantially growing at a less than uh, robust uh, rate, which is only around 2%. As uh, Oliver uh, Blanchard alluded, uh, both exports and investments are directly and indirectly uh, affected by the global economic slowdown and the uncertainty and unpredictability caused by U.S.-China trade uh, conflicts. Uh, even Bank of Korea now forecasts this year's uh, growth at only around 2.2%. 2 .2%. Uh, I'm very sure the IMF's uh, October outlook will be lower that is earlier Korea's uh, gross prof the, uh, projection. As you must know very well, Korea is uh, a very highly uh, global trade dependent uh, country. Uh, Korea's uh, trade, both exports and imports together, to GDP uh, rate is over 80% one of the highest in the world, I suppose uh, only with the Germany, uh, not many countries, uh, the trade dependency is at this high. Uh, and also, uh, nearly 40% of Korea's exports, uh, uh, primarily consisting of intermediate goods, go to G2 economies, 26.8% <clears throat> to China and 12% to the US. Uh, uh, therefore, Korea is very much concerned about global economic slowdown and the uh, US-China uh, uh, trade conflict. Uh, as you know very well, Korea benefited so much from the existing post-war, post-war, the liberal economic order. Uh, but now uh, we are very much concerned about the demise of that very liberal multilateralism based world order, especially since, ironically, the U.S. is leading the breakup of the order uh, with Mr. Trump's uh, unilateral American first 
slogan. G2, that is US-China, uh, make a 40% of global economy. Certainly, the trade dispute between these two countries are uh, most critical factor for the global economic performance and the breakup of the existing liberal the uh, global order. The problem is, uh, I'm sure many of you would agree with me in saying that the, ten the disputes between these two countries will prolong. And what that means is the prolonged uncertainty and unpredictability for the global world. We all, I'm sure you saw the news this morning or last night in Washington, D.C. yesterday, China and the U.S. had an, an agreement on their negotiation on the disputes. But as expected, it was a small deal. It's a not big deal. Uh, and I, for one, did not expect uh, any kind of big deal as possible as Mr. Trump would like to have. Um, the reasons I have why these tensions of conflicts between these two countries will be prolonged. I have three reasons to give you. First, the trade dispute, the current trade dispute goes well beyond two nations' trade relationship. It involves two great powers, what you might call hegemonic competition, which is just intensifying. Second, China will not easily give up its ultimate goal of achieving what is described as China dream by 2050. And therefore, they will not easily give up on their program of Made in China 2025. So China being very strategic and the uh, pragmatic uh, nation and people. I'm sure there will be many small deals, concessions here and there, but I think the uh, conflict will be continued because U.S. primacy in both hard and soft powers will continue at least a few decades to come. And therefore, U.S. will also will try to exert its uh, power and project its power. That means that the tension will be continued. Uh, so for, the, the, uh, uh, for these reasons, I, I would see that there will be prolonged global uncertainty and unpredictability, uh, and therefore, there will be short supply of public goods. Short supply of global public goods, and that is free trade environment, and stable finance and uh, currency uh, regime. Uh, okay. I, so maybe I will stop here because we will have a second round. Thank you. The, Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, looking at, at the watch, uh, we are already running short of time, uh, but I, and we have many uh, issues on the table here. Unfortunately, fortunately, this conference takes three days, so much of the, many of the <laughs> balls that are brought in the game uh, can be played later on. I would like to, to come may, uh, to our... If I may just one second uh, yes. highlight is, it's clear that uh, China is a key player, and by 2030, China will have the biggest economy and uh, China will be a high-income economy. Uh, an issue that is debatable now is whether 
a bipolar world, global order is going to emerge or a multipolar. And I want to bring the dimension of Europe. If Europe could be economically stronger, uh, the global order would be multipolar, which is quite conducive for uh, stability. We know that between World War I and World War II, in a period of 25 years, we have had two world wars. Now it's 75 years since we have had a war in this nuclear age, and, and here Europe came with the right solution of uh, uh, building European Union and, and becoming an important uh, <clears throat> global economic power. And uh, also the U.S.'s involvement during the Marshall uh, Plan <coughs> post World War II recovery contributed to this. So one key aspect uh, that, uh, will ha that will shape the future is whether a new bipolar world or multipolar global order is going to emerge. So thank you so much for reminding us Europeans of our important role. I think uh, many of us here agree.